Hey, you're watching Ruby Guides, and in this video, you're going to learn free practical uses for Ruby Blog. What's a Ruby Blog? A Ruby Blog is just a syntax element that allows you to pass code around other methods. Let me show you what I mean. This is how you create the Ruby block. You put any code inside, and this is a block, right? But to use this, you need to pass this, give it to some other method. Like for example, if we had a time method, this is how we will pass, we will send the block into the method. Another way to use a block is to make it a lambda. So what is a lambda? A lambda is just an object that we have this block and we save the block. It's a block container. So you can use this block later. So as you can see there, that's our, our proc object. Now, let me show you the, the three examples. First, I want to show you a timing method. So what I want to do is to know how long it takes to do something in Ruby. Like create a very big string or make some math operation or anything like that. So first we need the starting time. Then we need to yield. And then we need to get the difference. So the current time minus the starting time. And to use this, we can do the following. A times a big number. And what we get is the output. As you can see, we get the how long it takes to create this string, a string this long. Of course, we can make it bigger and we can see that it takes longer to create this string, right? As you can see, that's a useful use for blocks. And the, way, and the way this works is thanks to the yield keyword. The yield keyword, there's just one thing, and that thing is to use the block. So until you use yield, the block is there sleeping, right? It's not doing anything. The method takes the block, and when you use yield, then it will use the block. And using the block just means that it will do whatever is inside the block. It will, it will use the code inside the block. So we create the string. So what's going on here is the following. We take the starting time, then we create a string. And of course that takes some time. And then we take the difference. And the difference is how long it took to create this string. That's one use for blocks. You can also do this like some kind of login method where you log something before and then you do the thing, you yield, and then you log something after that thing is done, right? So it's like a sandwich kind of effect. You do something before, then you do the thing, and then you do something after. So blocks are very useful for doing things like this. Example number one. Let's see example number two. And example number two is about lazy code. You might have seen my video about the fetch method, but if you haven't, that's okay because you will see, you will see how it works here. We have a hash and we can call fetch on it. And we fetch we can get the value of a key. For example, we get the value of, we get the value of A, which is one. And one thing that fetch does is it takes a block and the block becomes the default value. So let me show you. And as you can see, it's doing nothing right now. And this code is not being used at all. Like I explained on the first example, the block is used like sleeping, it's lazy, it's not doing anything until the method 
decides to call it the user. And in the case of fetch, the block is used whenever you have a value, a key that's not on the hash. So C is not on the hash. So we get one, two, three, which is the default value. So that's a very important attribute or property or feature of blocks, which makes them very useful. So that's example number two, lazy code. And the last example is callbacks. Let me write a little method for you to demonstrate. Request HTTP on complete. Okay, so we have this request HTTP method and it does something, it makes some external request. And what we want is when it's done, when it's complete, for it to do something. And we want to be able to change what that something is. So maybe sometimes we want, depending on the request we are making, some request we, we want to print a message on the screen, some other request, maybe we want to save something in the database, right? We want to change, to be able to change this logic depending on the request, right? To do that, we can use a block like this as a parameter and notice what makes this a block, what makes this special is the ampersand symbol. So when you put the ampersand symbol like this, the only thing this means is, hey, this a block, I'm expecting a block. And the block is going to have this name, right? That's what this is. So when I pass the block, this block becomes incomplete, and then I can use the block with the call method. Uh, what this we do is the same as yield if we use the code inside our block. And just like the other examples, this incomplete code, this block, we remain sleeping, we remain, remain lazy until it's used. So that's the last example, the incomplete callback. So I hope you found this useful and interesting if you did, make sure to give me a like so I know that you like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do it now because that will help you keep improving your Ruby skills. And if you like this, I think you will also enjoy my Ruby book, Ruby Deep Dive. You can find it on my site, rubyguides.com. Thanks a lot for watching.